Hey, what's up everybody? Let's take a look at some quick practice in which we identify the types of intermolecular forces that we would see between molecules of a given substance. Our first example that we're gonna look at is oxygen. Oxygen is an example of one of our diatomic elements, or we have two atoms of oxygen covalently bonded to one another. Let's first compare electronegativities. Two atoms of oxygen will have identical electronegativities, and therefore they will share the electrons equally between the two atoms. If I were to try to observe a bond dipole, there would be no bond dipole because the electrons are shared equally. Neither one of the atoms are hogging the electrons. Because there are no bond dipoles, there is no molecular dipole either. If I were to look at an electrostatic potential map of this molecule, recognize there would be no slightly positive or slightly negative region. And so, if I had two molecules of oxygen, what types of interactions would I see in between them? What types of intermolecular forces would exist? Because there are no dipoles that exist on the molecules themselves, the only type of intermolecular force or the intermolecular attractions that we will see between the two molecules of oxygen will be London dispersion forces which is the weakest type of intermolecular force. Because molecules of oxygen don't have very strong forces of attraction between their molecules, we notice them in the gas phase at room temperature. Next, let's take a look at a molecule of water. First, let's examine the electronegativities and recognize that the differences in electronegativity will cause some unequal sharing of electrons in that bond. That will create polar bonds. And as I look at the dipoles on each bond, recognize that the dipoles will face, in each case, the more electronegative oxygen atom. The overall dipole on a molecule of water is going to have the negative region up near the oxygen atom and the slightly positive region down near the hydrogen atoms. Again, as I take a look at the electrostatic potential map, recognize that negative region up here by the oxygen, positive region down here by the hydrogen. So what does that mean then if I have multiple molecules of water? What types of intermolecular forces will we observe? Well, first, recognize that we're always gonna have London dispersion forces because all molecules have atoms with electrons, there will always be some London dispersion interaction. In addition to that, we also have dipole-dipole interaction. Remember, water essentially acts as a dipole. As a dipole which is a really funny way of saying that it has a slightly negative region and a slightly positive region. In fact, the type of dipole-dipole interaction is specifically known as hydrogen bonding in this example because hydrogen is bonded to one of those three very electronegative elements that really pulls hydrogen's electrons away from it, exposing that positive proton. And so you will see dashed lines between the positive region of one hydrogen molecule and the negative region of a neighboring one. And again, it's that very strong hydrogen bonding intermolecular force that holds water molecules together and gives them some unique properties, including a very high boiling point. For our third example, let's take a look at a molecule of ammonia. Let's take a look at the electronegativity values of hydrogen and nitrogen and recognize that the electronegativity difference between them is gonna create some unequal sharing in those bonds. If we look at just the bond dipoles, again, recognize that each dipole will have its negative end facing towards the more electronegative nitrogen. Overall, those dipoles would create a net dipole in which the negative region on a molecule of ammonia will be located near the nitrogen end of the molecule. A quick look at the electrostatic potential map indicates that once again, the negative region is up here near nitrogen the positive region down here by the hydrogens. Once again, as I think about the interactions then that would occur between two molecules of ammonia, not only will I always have those London dispersion forces because my molecules of ammonia have electrons, but I'm also gonna have dipole-dipole interactions. Specifically, I'll have that strong type of dipole-dipole interaction known as hydrogen bonding. And remember, we will often see that specific type of strong intermolecular force the hydrogen bonding dipole-dipole interaction depicted with a dotted line because it is such a strong force. Not quite as strong as the intramolecular bonding, but a pretty strong intermolecular force nonetheless. Okay, for our last example, let's take a look at molecule of CHF3. 
trifluoromethane. As we compare the electronegativities of our different elements, recognize our different electronegativities will cause some unequal sharing of the electrons in those bonds. As I look at the bond dipoles, recognize that in the bond between carbon and each of the fluorines, the bond dipole is gonna face the more electronegative fluorine atom in each case. And although there's not a large difference between the electronegativities of carbon and hydrogen, carbon is slightly more electronegative than hydrogen. Although in many cases, the difference in electronegativities between those two atoms is not large enough to be considered polar. If we were to look at the overall molecular dipole for this molecule, we would see a slightly negative region down by those very electronegative fluorine atoms and a slightly positive region up by the hydrogen. Again, the electrostatic potential map to help you see that slightly negative and slightly positive region. And lastly, as we try to think about the types of intermolecular forces of attraction that would occur between molecules of trifluoromethane, again, always run the dispersion forces because all of those atoms in the molecule has electrons. So we'll always be creating some of those weak line of dispersion forces. And because each of these molecules acts as a dipole, we will have some dipole-dipole interaction. So a little bit stronger of an intermolecular force. However, we do not see that very strong hydrogen bonding type of dipole-dipole interaction. Remember, in order for that interaction to occur, we have to see a hydrogen atom bonded to one of the very electronegative nitrogen oxygen or fluorine atoms. We don't see that in an example of trifluoromethane.